Well, hello. I just really hope that you can hear me because I can't hear anything myself. Um, so perhaps if anybody is watching at the moment, you can let me know if you can hear. Uh, OK, um, I haven't got any comments up yet. Show. Oops. <laughs> oh, Alan. Alan. Oh, great. Um, Alan, can you hear me, please? Because um, I can't hear anything myself. If you just let me know. Ah, oh, great. OK, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, this is kind of all about you, you know. Uh, this, this broadcast that I'm doing this morning is all about uh, spiritualist phenomena, as demonstrated by our very Reverend Alan Acton last night. There was the most wonderful communication given. And I just wanted to tell the world about it because I think that, you know, people should know about these wonderful occasions and events where communication between this world and the next is proved beyond doubt. And to the satisfaction of those among us who are extremely sceptical, and that includes Reverend Allen. And uh, we need to know that um, uh, the evidence of survival that we're receiving is is uh, is truthful and uh, proves just that. And uh, what happened yesterday evening was a wonderful example. And you see, uh, we talk about the phenomena of spiritualism for those who may not be aware of it. So bear with me, all you experts. Um, and that is uh, the psychical side of spiritualism and spiritual understandings. And, um, and it's manifested in various ways. We have mental phenomena and we have physical phenomena. And mental phenomena is that which, by which one receives uh, generally communications from loved ones in spirit uh, through the medium. Uh, by the impressions upon their mind that they then relay to their recipients. And of course, this is this is basically subjective um, because obviously the person receiving the message alone really understands and knows whether this is the person that they say they are or not, um, whether the evidence that's given to them, the proof that's given to them, their identity is correct and so on and so forth. And, and it's for others who are present perhaps at that, at that reading, uh, at that, at that particular kind of communication, especially when it's given in a big hall or a church, to decide for themselves whether they can accept what they're hearing to be the truth. And of course, in spiritualist churches and meetings uh, around the world, uh, this is, this is uh, being proved to be satisfactory uh, for the majority of times. But then there's a physical mediumship, which is the kind of mediumship that is able to be shown to others. So it's an objective kind of mediumship. But this requires a very special kind of dedication, a very special kind of person, personality uh, in order to make this happen, because spirit operators on the other side of the divide um, have to, uh, you know, hunt about really for somebody you know, a suitable instrument and uh, where lots of people um, are, uh, are keen to put themselves forward and lots of people practice this, um, you know, and, and, and we talk about uh, trance mediumship um, and as well as the other more, uh, uh, what should I say, uh, um, demonstrably uh, eyebrow raising um table turning and, and and trumpets you know flying around and and bells ringing and people singing in the background and all sorts of things like that that happen in in seances we call them seances uh, we differentiate don't we between the seances which uh provide that physical mediumship and the um and the meetings uh 
ordinarily where uh, mental mediumship is demonstrated. We don't we don't generally call those seances, although in a way they are. So I hope that everybody is. Uh, I see that you're, <laughs> you're you're. It's like being in my circle room. You know, you're all talking amongst yourselves, which I it's fine. I don't mind if you don't listen to me, but I'm sure that you're listening with one ear at least. Um, and uh, the the point is that last night we had a wonderful demonstration of physical mediumship, aka trance mediumship where uh, the demonstrating medium, being Reverend Alan Acton, was able to allow those in the world of spirit who wished to communicate and contact us here to actually speak in very much the same idiom and the same voices as they had when they were here on the earth plane. And this was uh, very evidential in itself because one of the communicators, Sir Oliver Lodge, uh, were set great store by such matters and um, and and hearing again the tones of of, of a loved one um, in, in a in a, a seance situation and um, and uh, Gordon Higginson who who was uh, another uh, communicator also set great store by uh, good evidence of survival being given by uh, trance mediums as, as a trance medium himself, um, as well as a mental medium. And, um, and they, they both came through, uh, Reverend Allen, uh, to, to basically my satisfaction. And I believe that others who watch the uh, recorded uh, seance, which was recorded by Reverend Judith Freeman, uh, who who conducted the uh, the event? Um, uh, she's going to upload that, and uh, you you will all be able to see it. And uh, I will put a link to that on my Facebook page uh, to make sure that everybody who is uh, tuning in to me will be able to access that as well and come to their own conclusions. You know, as spiritualists, we say don't just believe what we say; have it proved for you. You know, we will demonstrate what we say to be the truth, and um, and so it's very very important and incumbent upon our mediums to uh, be uh, to be good, to be genuine. Of course, that goes without saying, but to to develop their mediumship to the best of their ability. And Reverend Allen is still, of course, uh, developing his abilities as we all do. Um, and, you know, the one thing about ignorance is that people don't know they're ignorant. It's only the clever who know that they are ignorant, uh, because then we ha we have to, and I count myself amongst those, um, you know, we, we know that we have a lot to learn. And as much as we can learn, it's not the, it's not the sum total of all knowledge. So we just have to keep going. And I think Sir Oliver Lodge would agree with me on that one. Now, the other thing that I ought to tell you about this is that um, Reverend Allen himself is actually dyslexic. He won't mind me saying that. And he is of a, an average general education. Now, um, you know, when you hear um, how the communicators came through, you will see this marked difference in their manner in their delivery of of their words and phrases and uh and it's very 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 convincing um now uh first of all we had somebody called maud who you could say is uh reverend dallin's uh guide helper and uh, doorkeeper for such things uh she she is there to introduce and keep order for the medium, in this case, of course, Reverend Allen. And, uh, and also, I must say to you that when it comes to people like our guides and helpers, doorkeepers and so on, like attracts like. So, so whatever the deep personality is of the medium, so you have the personality of the spirit being who has volunteered themselves 
to to be uh, all those things uh, when it comes to uh, bringing uh, communicators from spirit through. And Maud is a wonderful, she sounded Irish to me, um, and, and uh, lovely soft tones. And um, she spoke through uh, Reverend Allen, who had to go to sleep. So in other words, his consciousness was at a level where you could say that the uh, brain waves were very, very slow. And uh, basically, you know, uh, the deeper into trance mediumship you go, the nearer to death, physical death you are. So it is a very dangerous situation if it's not in a controlled uh, environment. And also that you have the right people around you helping you both from spirit and over here. And of course, uh, last night was no exception. And uh, Reverend Allen was able, after a few pleasantries with us, to go to sleep. Now, I must tell you that it, it, I was there, and so was uh, Reverend Kathy and uh, Reverend Judith, of course, and that made up the quartet. Now, this was an amazing event for me. Uh, after Maud uh, introduced uh, everyone, oh, good morning, everybody. I shall say good morning to everybody because otherwise I'll, lo I'll lose my thread. <laughs> um, now, after after this delightful Maud uh, came through and, and, and said a, a few words and very lighthearted and, and wonderfully uh, soft and, and uh, kindly and um, Reverend Allen certainly uh, was uh, out of the picture, shall we say, because he, he wasn't snoring, but he, he was definitely uh, on that plane of consciousness where he, he was not aware of his physical surroundings. And then she brought through somebody who had a rather uh, gravelly voice very, very educated voice. Um, and it was without a doubt Sir Oliver Lodge. And he spoke to us, he spoke, he spoke to me about various things and uh, it was absolutely evidential. The other thing that uh, Alan, Reverend Allen didn't know, so it wasn't him at all, uh, is that Sir Oliver Lodge and myself share the same birth date and also we shared the same interest in the Fabian Society. Now I wrote in the magazine of the Fabian Society which was actually called New Socialist. Um, I was their sports correspondent, now I was their sports columnist, I wrote, I wrote a sports column but of course sports politics and sports science and um, as, as would you would expect within the Fabian Society, David Cameron himself said to me once, um, I didn't know that the Fabian Society had a sense of fun. And I said, what do you mean fun? He said, well, you know, to have you writing sport. And I said to him, David, you know, for me, sport is a very serious subject and it's quite appropriate. So I do recommend that you read my articles, I said to him. And I said, you know what, David, you are going to be prime minister. And he laughed at me and he said, I don't think so. And I said, oh, I know you are. So there you are. You see, my psychic juices were flowing. <laughs> but um, and, and of course, as we know, um, uh, 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 he, he, he did I say David Cameron? I hope I didn't. It was the other David. <laughs> oh dear, Milliband. Uh, yes, well, um, oh, Kathy's watching in now, so she'll have a good laugh at, uh, if I did make a mistake. Please, please forget it. Be, forget I made that mistake about which Prime Minister I was talking to. It's, uh, it, it, it was actually uh, uh, Mr. Milliband. Now then. 
The thing is this, that, that Sir Oliver Lodge was a member of the Fabian Society as well as other uh, interesting organisations and groups. And he was also, of course, very interested in psychical matters, in spiritualist matters. And uh, he was a, a tremendous scientist and his science was all about communication. Fancy that. I bet Reverend Allen didn't even know that. I'm sure. I'm sure. And that's not to decry anybody for not knowing it, because it is something that why would anybody know that who wasn't particularly interested in that branch of science, perhaps? And, um, you know, we're talking about the early days of Morse code, would you believe, and telegraphy. And um, he was he was he was really ranked among the great uh, uh, scientists of his day. Um, and uh, he was actually knighted for his work. Um, he, uh, he, he, uh, I I'll tell you this, I have something here. You know, he, uh, he became assistant professor of applied mathematics at University College in 1879, and was appointed to chair of physics at University College Liverpool in 1881. And uh, he he had experiments, uh, reception of electromagnetic waves, and uh, and uh, he he actually uh, produced and invented a device that that shook the fi iron filings loose between waves, called a trembler, and uh, connected to a receiving circuit. This improved co coherer detected Morse code signals transmitted by radio wave and enabled them to be transcribed on paper by an inca. And Lodge's device first demonstrated before the Royal Institute in 1894 quickly became the standard detector in early wireless telegraph receivers. Um, he, he obtained patents in 1897 for the use of in, inductors and capacitors to adjust the frequency of wireless transmitters and receivers. Now the thing is this, that uh, that he was totally immersed in communication and um, and totally immersed in this life uh, with that kind of contact. And, and he wrote many books, uh, many distinguished scientific journals. Um, and uh, now, what's this? Uh, Alan Acton, you did, Lynn. Oh, Darren Bell, ha ha. Oh dear, yes, I did mistake the the, the second names. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> well, you know, as the old hymn goes, trust no trust no uh, party or political faction. Uh, you have to just uh, trust in God and do the right. So, uh, and what's in a name after all? And as Shakespeare said, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. And uh, one prime minister, I suppose, is as much uh, good as another prime minister here in the United Kingdom. Um, and, um, you know, the other thing is that Sir Oliver Lodge was was much vilified by uh, by the church, particularly the established church for his views, uh, because he he was a he was a heretic, really, uh, although he was a Christian. But, um, you know, he 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 was very, very uh, uh, he was very uh, he 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 had a voluminous output of uh, scientific philosophical philosophical and religious publications and um you know they they, they uh he was he was also um hailed in various uh, popular magazines for wireless uh hailed as a pioneer uh, because of his syntonic tuning invention and actually admired for uh, upholding the principles of, 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 of science and of the ether. Now, that was something that he talked about a lot, you know, and as we know, in this modern day and age, uh, we know that there is dark matter, that there is substance uh, in space. We think of it as space, but there is substance. And, and uh, he called it the ether and uh, many people are also. Um, but yeah, so uh, he, he talked about, you know, uh, psychokinesis and all those uh, sort of maneuverings uh, by spirit operators that we understand about as spiritualists. And, and last night he came through 
and he must have been delighted. He must have been delighted. Um, and Nick, ah, oh, <laughs> Reverend Nick Brown and Reverend Sarah Lee Beavers, and oh dear, oh dear, we're 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 a saintly lot, aren't we, this morning? And um, you know, I do recommend that if you get an opportunity to read any of his uh, spiritualist work, uh, that you do so. Um, his scientific, uh, you know, writings are, are many and uh, and are catalogued, of course, uh, because uh, you know he served the science community so well. But again, uh, you know, the the established uh, scientific community and uh, also the church. Uh, certainly had to go at him in his lifetime uh, for his views and uh, he would never be uh, swayed from them and when he came through last night he he it, it was just wonderful he himself was proving his own point that uh, that you can communicate with with the spirits of those who we call dead and that they are living on in another dimension. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that, uh, you know, when you talk about electromagnetic theory and so on and so forth, that it all points to the fact that he was able, he must have really enjoyed getting through and, and, and speaking about uh, various matters to us. And as I said, it, it'll be, you know, Reverend Judith is, uh, is organizing that. So it will be possible to see uh that uh that seance that was held and uh reverend allen now the other th the other person who then came through would you believe was gordon higginson and again although uh the voice wasn't as ringing as gordon's was the inflections the uh the idiosyncratic way of speaking, his speech patterns uh, were definitely his. And, um, you know, Gordon Higginson had a, had what we used to call, we used to call an affected manner of speech. And uh, this was most evident. And Reverend Alan Acton is the last person that you would say had an affected tone of speech um you know it, he certainly doesn't speak with a cut glass accent as gordon higginson did and uh some of the phraseology certainly wouldn't have spoken in in the way that gordon higginson spoke and uh, the other thing was that when gordon was here on the earth plane of course he he was uh he was the head of the arthur finley college for many years and uh, and also he himself again was a trance medium, par excellence, and a mental medium. And he was also, dare we say it, uh, an enlightened kind of capitalist because he established a fund where uh, interest would accrue and therefore uh, help the Spiritualist National Union uh, in it in its quest to have a, a proper financial basis and uh and he was very very good at that and he he was actually a businessman himself and uh he often used to say of course that he didn't he didn't uh, charge for anything but then of course he had a very he made a very good living uh, on another level uh, on the mundane ordinary material level so he wasn't in need of funds um and of course it, it can be you know it, that there was that sort of air about him when he came through um totally <laughs> might i say oblivious of the fact that some people need to scrape a living and if they are good mediums and people will pay a sum to them for uh getting a communication from their loved ones um then you know I, I think that uh, that's that, that's fair enough, but um, he obviously <laughs> he obviously disapproved of anything like that. And um, but from his lofty standpoint, lovely, lovely person. But you know, like everybody else, he didn't he 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 was of um, can we say a, a rather more simple makeup 
as a human being. Um, and he, he wasn't too political, unlike Sir Oliver Lodge. And uh, Sir Oliver Lodge was, was very, very keen on social reform and, and helping those less fortunate. And in fact, uh, Sir Oliver Lodge was known to give lectures, uh, scientific lectures, and also spiritualist science lectures to uh, first to academics, but then he would make sure that he went to, you know, to a, a place where working, as, as they were called, working men or, you know, uh, ordinary people's um, uh, places of meeting uh, to give them a talk as well. So he, he was very keen to spread the knowledge. And in fact, if you like, Arthur Findlay uh, was, was of similar bent to Sir Oliver Lodge and Gordon Higginson would have known that because uh, when when uh, Arthur Findlay actually left Stansted Hall, he, one, of his, one of his stately homes, to the Spiritualist National Union, he wanted that also to be used to uh, further the general education, general knowledge of mediums because he felt that those who spoke for spiritualism should have a uh, 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 at least a, a, a basic uh, knowledge, a general knowledge of uh, of education, and uh, and some in his time certainly didn't, because as you know, in those days, uh, people left school early, uh, they had to go to work to earn a living, and therefore education wasn't really for everyone, although it appeared to be. So, uh, you know, other than uh, uh, a basic smattering and Arthur Findlay actually wanted uh, the Arthur Findlay College, uh, Stansted Hall, to actually teach the three R's as well as uh, spiritual and psychic studies. So there you are. So Gordon Higginson himself would have known that. Uh, Gordon moaned about the SNU. He is he was still very obviously taking an interest in everything uh, that, that was to do with Stansted Hall. Um, it was very obvious. Reverend Allen couldn't have known any of that. Now Reverend Allen has been in this way of life, this spiritualist way of life for many years. And uh, and and before we actually Got, got cracking on the seance part of, of his demonstration, I was telling him that I'd been prompted to find this book. There we are, look, the two worlds. And that's a magazine which now incorporates um, here and there. And uh, I, I've got a feeling that they, they're now in the psychic news as a magazine. But anyway, um, you know, we, you can't expect me to know everything. Um, and this was January 2005. And you see those little markers I put in there? I was telling Alan that when I looked at it, I realised that I was I was serving West Norwood Church, my favourite person, Tilly, Tilly Hatton, bless her, um, you know, whose funeral I took. Um, and in fact, I was standing at, at the graveside and I forgot that I was taking the service and and I was standing there and 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 sort of grieving myself. and. And she suddenly said to me, get on with it. I went, oh, and, and everybody standing around, there were masses of people there from the SNU and all sorts of different organisations and, and her friends and family and everything. It was crowded. It was a crowded funeral as befits someone who'd been president of, of a church for many, many, many years and were very well liked, and especially by me as well. And, uh, and and I'm sure that they all saw me jump like that and realised uh, what had happened. So there you are. That was my own personal bit of physical phenomena there. But, um, yeah, so I, sh I told Alan that uh, he appeared twice in, in this book, uh, once at the SAGB. Um, uh, tell it, uh, it was a, he was giving a he was giving a, a workshop at the Spiritualist Association of Great Britain. Um, uh, on, let me see, Alan Acton, Discover Your Inner Ability. Uh, part two of this workshop is for those who have just started to in, in, inquire into spiritual phenomena. And that was uh, on March the 12th, uh, 2005. And then sort of further on, there was Tim Abbott. 
who everybody knows, of course, he's a, I believe he's a fellow now of the uh, Spiritualist National Union, and he was serving at Windsor Church, their service in January, uh, on the same date, actually, that I was doing West Norwood, doing, giving a service. Um, and then there was David Nason, who is now passed over to Spirit, and who I served as well, and he was a good friend, and, and son of, of Jesse Nason, a very, very famous uh, physical and mental medium. And uh, he, he was serving in his own uh, meeting place in Venner Road in Sydenham. And I, I, that was one time when I was uh, serving there. And he said, and I said, Jim, how long have I got, David? And he said, well, if you're having uh, luck, he said, you can have till after nine o'clock. But if you're not having much luck, you can stop at nine. I said, right, thank you very much. Anyway, I, I, was, I did have some luck. <laughs> so it went on a bit longer than nine. And then there was Ian Taylor at Welling, and Ian is a good friend, and and some wonderful, wonderful mediums uh, working, and uh, you know, just just marvellous. And uh, there was Dinah Annabelle at Fulham, Andy Mulligan, and Len Tat. Well, he was called Leonard Tat then, uh, and Andrew Woodley. Andrew, if you're watching, you you were at Fulham. Uh, uh, no, no, yes, no, no, you were, at, you were at Eltham on January the 9th, 2005, and Alan Acton was at Fulham. He was at Fulham, uh, January the 6th. So there you are, you see. So, so Alan's been working a very, very, very long time, and I know that he's been de developing this kind of mediumship for about 10 years. And, uh, you know, you really have to dedicate yourself to this work if that's what you want to do. It's not enough just to want to be like somebody or other. You have to actually work at it. And apart from that, as I always say to people, you have to pay the price, unfortunately. And if you look back at the lives of most mediums, uh, you'll find all sorts of troubles and tribulations that they've had to overcome. And first of all, to overcome, you've had to go through them. And uh, so we're all kind of damaged goods. But uh, apparently this makes us better mediums. So we have to put up with that. And as we look back, we think, well, this is what we had to do. Now, I'm just having a look to see. Um, and I see, oh, Margaret, standard received English. <laughs> hmm. Well, uh, yes. Uh, now, if you listen to Gordon's dulcet tones, you know, he sounds very uh, posh. And um, Reverend Allen is not posh by any means. And in fact, he has to be restrained from swearing and so on. You know, it's good old Anglo-Saxon stuff. So um, and there's no way that either the two communicators would have been uh, in that way themselves. So there we have Sir Oliver Lodge, who was able to prove himself, to prove to himself and to others by uh, coming through as himself, um, that there is that survival after this life. And, um, and Gordon, of course, also proved that not only is there survival, which he proved very, very well while he was down here, but that he was still concerned with all the things that he was concerned about while he was here. And um, it was very, very, very evidential. So um, I hope that uh, Alan Swear, Nick Brown, uh, do you know what? I know it, it's hard to believe, isn't it? That that Reverend Allen, who who you know butter wouldn't melt. Um, he looked magnificent last night. He he had proper proper clothes on. <laughs> I mean, in the old days, you know, Reverend Allen Acton wasn't averse to sitting there in the nuddy, giving his giving his philosophy, and giving out messages. I mean, absolutely amazing. You know, we need more people of different kinds and who have different sensibilities um, and uh, you know spiritualism itself 
must embrace everybody. And I think that um, Sir Oliver Lodge must be delighted with the way things have gone. I mean, OK, so we're all getting it in the next still, but then why wouldn't we? You know, the, the established church, while they still don't devote great long public screeds to condemning spiritualists, as, as happened with Sir Oliver Lodge, um, and uh, newspaper inches to doing the same thing as in Gordon Higginson. Um, but, uh, you know, and many, many, many more, of course, many more. Um, you know, we we have got a lot of uh, um, good press, if you like, now, um, and people have had to accept some of our truths. Kathy saying spiritual string vest. Mm, yes. Um, well, Darren, yes, it, it really was. It, it was really very good, and uh, you know, I think that. Um, those of us who are, you know, developing, still developing, uh, if we want to uh, consider uh, that standard, I mean, the, the, the dedication um, it is tremendous. And um, I mean, I, I will say to you that uh, Reverend Judith Freeman used to sit with me for developing trance. And we used to sit at my mother's table that I'd been left um, in my kitchen. Kathy would be in the other room doing what she had to do. And we'd be in the kitchen and and my doorkeepers, Hung and Ming, would be at the door uh, to stop people coming in, literally to stop us being disturbed because trance development requires uh, peace and quiet. Uh, you mustn't be disturbed because it can make you ill. Um, and uh, we sat every week for months. And eventually, of course, uh, Reverend Judith was told that she could then continue her development herself. And, uh, and so it went. And uh, of course, we... Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. I'll be doing more of this work. Contact Judith Freeman if you want to witness more. She's on Facebook. <laughs> yes, I mean, you know, some people say that, you know, social media is horrible and, and all the rest of it, but it, it, everything is what you make of it. And Sir Oliver Lodge, the great communicator, would have welcomed this of, as a wonderful opportunity. I mean, you can, it amazed, he, he passed away in 1940 and uh, just in the infancy of television and he he must be absolutely delighted with the, the way in which we can all communicate with each other now down here and also that he's able to communicate on this social media platform how wonderful was that so um, yes I mean it, it was all very jolly and it wasn't spooky at all, by the way. Um, you know, that's the other thing. Uh, of course, you know, the the old uh, vision of a seance is everybody in pitch black and, you know, it's all spooky and stuff. I, th I think that uh, Blythe Spirit is wonderful. You know, the play that was written by a, by, by, by a spiritualist. And, um, you know, I, I recommend anybody to see that because it's really so true. He, he knew so much about uh, spiritualist ph phenomena himself uh, that he was able to write a very entertaining play that's been made into a film and it's been remade. And, and the new film's quite good, not as good as the Margaret Rutherford one and the Rex Harrison. But, uh, but I'm biased, I suppose. Um, however, um, I wish you a very good day. I hope that you found this of interest. Um, I wasn't really sure, as usual, uh, what I was, how I was going to talk about it. Uh, it was just that I was so excited to have been party to that uh, seance and to have heard from 
from Sir Oliver Lodge and Gordon Higginson and the lovely Maud. You know, absolutely delightful. And, um, you know, we used to say, you know, when you come into spiritualism, you must keep an open mind, but don't make it so open that your brains fall out. You know, be discerning of the spirits, as St. Paul said way back. You know, um, and don't be disheartened because uh, you're co-religionists, if you're a Christian, Muslim, Jew, Hindu, whatever, uh, poo-poo spiritualism, um, and, and try to say that you're off your chump because, you know, either you see things yourself or you, you, are, you are accepting that other people see things <laughs> and pass the, their images on to you and messages. Um, and, uh, you know, j just, just get on with it and, and we will spread the word. And I'll leave you as usual with, um, you know, because I know that they're always here. And uh, this is a book by uh, Sir Oliver Lodge. Uh, this one is called, very lucky to have this. Uh, I think this was a second hand. Uh, Ether and Reality. You can see that. Marvellous. Look at, look at all, the re all the reprints as well by the same author. Making of Man, The Substance of Faith, Man and the Universe, Reason and Belief, Modern Problems, The Survival of Man, Raymond Revised, and that was his son Raymond who died at Ypres in 1915. Elementary Mechanics, Electrons, Atoms and Rays, Life and Matter, Continuity, Talks about Wireless and Pioneers of Science. There's a new book out actually uh, last, last uh, June by a, a, a scientist and I, I can't recall it offhand but it's all about Sir Oliver Lodge and, and his scientific work. Uh, you know, as, as a man as well. So I think that would be well worth getting hold of if you're interested. Gordon Higginson, of course, you can see some of his work on YouTube, which is wonderful. Uh, some recordings and so on have been put on there. Um, and of course, uh, Reverend Jean, Minister Jean Bassett, the SNU doesn't like to call it its reverence, reverence, but Minister Jean Bassett, uh, she wrote, uh, on the side of angels about Gordon Higginson's life, which is very wonderful, SNU publications. Um, that that is well worth having a read of if you can get hold of it. And um, and Reverend Jean Bassett herself was a wonderful speaker for spiritualism and and, and exponent of mediumship too. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so there we are. You see, uh, we've come to the end of our, uh, our our lollipop. I suppose we've been chatting for. Uh, just over an hour and uh, as I was told when I was when I was uh, first in this movement that people's attention span really wavered after 15 minutes if you're still with me <laughs> I'm, ho I'm hoping that uh, you've enjoyed uh, my little chat and uh, I'll leave you with a message from them upstairs I'll take my book which I got from Lewisham and the healing prayers on the inside <laughs> and the lord's prayer is number 15 in case we don't remember where to look and i'll open it and i'll give you this message from them upstairs to us all to thee o heavenly father both heart and voice we raise for these thy suppliant servants in mingled prayer and praise praise for the joy of loving all other joys above Praise for the priceless blessing of love's response to love. Prayer that the full surrender of self may perfect be, that each be one with other and both be one in thee. Prayer that thou wilt accomplish the promise of today and crown the years with blessings that shall not pass away. Praise for the life most glorious that lies beyond the veil where faith will find fulfilment and love will never fail. God bless you all. And I hope that you'll join me again. Don't forget that on the Thursday night, there are there are, um, are services being broadcast by Reverend Nick Brown from the Little Book Christian Spiritualist. Reverend Sarah Lee Beavers also broadcasts from 
from Bridlington and uh, and there's Reverend Tony Swindles and, and and everybody, all our all our ministers are busy broadcasting and contacting and communicating with everybody. So I'll say God bless to you. Have a, as good a day as you can. If you are suffering in some way or, or a loved one is suffering, we ask for healing for them. Most sincerely, dear Lord, we ask in the name of love and light and truth. Amen. Bye for now. Goodbye for now.